All right. Uh, okay. So anyway, uh, let's get going on our first topic here because it's very, very interesting. Um, I'm really happy today to have uh, Officer Wes Gardner with us. Thanks for joining us today. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you for the invitation. Wes is probably saying to himself, well, really? Let's, let's see how this thing <laughs> well, turns out. <laughs> Put a mic in front of me, I get stage fright. Oh, come I'm on. Not, I'm not typically a, a public information officer for the police department, so this is a completely different uh, So we're making you stretch today. We're making yeah. you stretch. But see, the information you know, and that's what we're going to leech out of you, is information. So how many registered sex offenders are there living in Kennewick, as an example of one of our cities here? Uh, Kennewick has, as of today, 204 is what I checked this morning. 204 registered sex offenders, so that's level one, two, and three. Yes. Okay. Um, what is Kennewick's relationship with Benton County? Because isn't Benton County the the, sen the kind of the central source in this region? Um, well, also Franklin County. They, oh, okay, yeah, counties anyway. Yes. Um, so that the responsibility is to register with the county. The county tracks the, the information, and then Kennewick partners with Benton County, and so we actually go out, and I'm assigned to go out and do the verifications for the addresses of the offenders that live within the city limits of Kennewick. We do that as a partnership with Benton County Sheriff's Office. Okay, so they register with the county, and they have to identify their address. Correct. Is that for level one, two, and three? Yes. Okay. Um, so for folks that may not know it, or maybe a refresher, what are those levels? Well, there's level one, which is the lowest risk to reoffend. Lowest, okay. Uh, and then the level two is the moderate risk to reoffend. And then the highest level is level three. And that the risk is the highest uh, low risk to reoffend. So someone may have committed a grievous crime, as we would interpret it, but they could be identified as a level two because they're risk of reoffending is lower? Yes, and, and the risk is based on uh, not just a crime, but other uh, factors such as um, past history, uh, that the actual case in, was investigated. Uh, for example, if a person had several victims but fled to one offense and then that, the rest of it was dismissed. Mm -hmm. So that would be brought into the factoring of what the risk level is. Also, oh really? Also, if they have like hmm. other failure to registers, hmm. uh, other convictions, um, other offenses, um, also high risk things like maybe uh, drug history, uh, drug offenses, those kind of things. Who is making that determination? Um, if they're rated coming out of prison, um, there's actually a panel that rates them as they're coming out. Um, if they're coming from out of state into Washington, then it's a panel that's consistent of where they're going to register. For example, if they move into the Benton and Franklin County areas, there's actually a committee that meets and um, reviews that and then uh, votes on the rating level. Mm -hmm. um, tell me how many level threes, those are the ones it's like ding, 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 that we really, really care about. How many do we have here in just Kennewick? Um, just in, in Kennewick, we have eight level threes, highest risk three of them. And so how often do you check on those eight people? Um, within uh, every 90 days. Every 90 days? Yes. You go and knock on their door to see if they actually live there? Yes. Wow. Do you have any control where they live? Not, not uh, the police department does not. I do not have any control over that. Uh, their sentencing, judgment and sentence, would typically lay out what the restrictions are, uh, why they're on, uh, on community custody, um, out in the community. Department of Corrections will have some uh, control over that. Mm -hmm. um, but if, they're, if they've done their, their time and they're no longer on probation or parole, um, there typically are not any uh, restrictions. Okay, so every 90 days you're going and checking on these folks. Um, 
I know that there's this notification process because obviously in media we see those notifications. Mm -hmm. When uh, w when is there a notification that's like the neighborhood or direct neighbors or schools or the whole public? Well, how does that work? We we'll start with the level threes. Uh, the level threes, if they move um, and register to an address and it's in Kennewick, then I'm going to establish a flyer that's going to be sent out to the media. And that's what typically what you'll see and then put on Facebook or what have you. Um, and also, we'll establish an area around the residents and do mail outs to the neighborhood. That's for level three. That's so, for level, level three. three, everybody knows. Pretty much. Yeah, yes. okay. Level twos, we just, uh, um, and this is by the, the law itself that directs us to do this. Level twos, we do mail outs to uh, the neighborhood. And then level ones, um, there's no notification. Or we can't do a public notification or mail outs. However, if a person has a concern that, that they think their neighbor's a convicted sex offender and registered, um, they get a hold of me at the police department, then I can look into it if they are. If they can establish reasonable, a reasonable uh, reason why they should be aware of some of this, uh, this person's convictions and mm -hmm. things, and I can share that with them. For example, um, they live next door to them and, and they're concerned, they've heard rumors, whatever, and, and they have young children, and they're concerned about um, you know, the person's conviction for involved young children. Okay. Um, so, as a member of the public, I can go on a website, right, at Benton County, and I can look to see can I see pictures of people, level, their addresses? Level twos and threes. Two will, and three. It will show you the hundred block. Oh, just the block. Just the block. Not the actual address. Yeah. Okay, all right. But level ones, no. I'm not going to see them. I'm not going to see level ones. Okay. And just all right. to kind of put it in perspective, um, as we talked earlier, you know, um, there's 204 registered sex offenders as of this morning in Kennewick, uh, 181 of those are level ones. Okay. So those are the ones you're not going to see. Mm -hmm. 15 are level twos, and then eight are level threes. Mm -hmm. And aren't the limitations as to where the, the threes can be settled, those are set by the state, aren't there like you can't be a certain distance from a park or a school or something like that? Again, those, those have to do with um, the judgment and sentence set by uh -huh. the court. And if they're no longer on DOC, they may not have that restriction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, typically what would happen is if you had a child victim, um, there may be like an ongoing protection order mm -hmm. for that child or members of that child's family. Um, but if they've completed their time and they're off DOC, there may not be any restrictions for them. Yeah, entirely yeah. up to the And that's what I think a lot of people have confusion with is that they have to understand it's the Department of Corrections here. It's just the police department's job, if necessary, to monitor as long as they are legally required to do so. Monitoring their address and all. Yeah. Okay, we're going to take a break here because we do have to uh, pay some bills, but I want to come back. I want to find out a little bit more about who are those people. What are, the, what are some typical characteristics about sex offenders? We're back in a moment here on Meet in the Middle. Welcome back to Meet in the Middle. I'm Christine Brown. My guest right now in studio is Officer Wes Gardner with the Kennewick Police Department. His job is to keep track of where level two and three sex offenders live in the city of Kennewick. Um, um, also level one. So oh, monitor level one. oh, you monitor them. Okay, it's just that us as the public, we don't see them. No, that's correct. Yeah, okay. Um, so what if people fail to register in the first place? I mean, what is the incentive to register? Well, it could be that they'd be investigated for failure to register, and that would be seen with the prosecutor, and they could be uh, charged, and if they're convicted, it would be a felony offense. And so they could end up in prison for that offense alone. Oh, okay. So is that, a, is that enough of an incentive? I mean, do people primarily do uh, complete the registration process? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, it, I couldn't do this job by myself if that was not the case. I mean, I go out constantly. I have a list. I check every day. I update the list uh, that comes out of the database of who needs to be checked and what dates. Mm -hmm. um, and I go out. Typically, these people are where they're supposed to be. They're living and, and 
it's pretty easy to verify the information. Um, I, I, I usually have anywhere from five to ten um, out of the 200 that I, average of 200 that I check on um, with the moving in and out mm -hmm. um, that will be a failure to register investigation um, at any given time. Okay. So. So, but there's this other category, these people that are like considered transient, meaning they don't have an actual address. They're not paying rent somewhere, right? Right. And those people, their responsibility is to register at the sheriff's office if they're transient. And the sheriff's office requires them to come in once a week and provide oh. them face-to-face uh, -face contact, provide them a list of that places where they spent their nights. Oh, really? Yes. Wow, I wonder what those that what's on that list. Parks? Uh, no, typically it's it's their couch surfing. Okay, okay. Wow. Huh. How many transients do we have? That's a good question. I'd have to check with the county on that. Um, I'm guessing this is just off the top of my head, but mm -hmm. I'm guessing probably thirty five, forty. Whoa, okay. Mm hmm. That's it gives you a little pause, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so this law, it's pretty extensive. I mean, we check up on sex offenders a whole heck of a lot more than we check up on anybody else, don't we? That's correct. That was a result of a public outcry back in the late 80s. In 1990, uh, Washington State um, actually passed legislation. For, for the monitoring and verification of sex offender addresses. So before that, people served their time in prison, they got out, and that was the end of it, huh? We didn't know about them Correct. until they committed another crime. Correct. Huh. Who are these people? Uh, you want to just kind of look. Just give me some stats on them. Um, you know, are they male, female, ages? Well, 98% of the offenders are male. 98%? Yeah. Okay. And 84 of, of offenders are white. 84% are white. 32 white per, male. 32% of the offenders are 40 years or older. So one third. So like when I do presentations for like coaches and stuff on sexual predators and, and stuff, I'm standing up in front of them going, look at me, I'm over 40, I'm white male, so, you know, oh, I feel yeah. like that. Yes, yeah. John. <laughs> John, you're in that category too. 53. <laughs> So, okay. Hmm. So All right. that's, that's based on the, the stats on it. So, mm -hmm. so uh, I know that you have some stats on um, recommitting crimes, and you take uh, you looked at all crimes and sex crimes, and of course, keeping in mind that these sex crimes has a significant monitoring process. What do we know about people committing additional crimes after that? So recidivism uh, rates for all felony crimes mm -hmm. um, being convicted again would be 27 percent. Okay, 27 percent. All right, okay. a little more for, than a quarter. Okay, that's all felony. Mm -hmm. Violent felony convictions, so your assaults with weapons and things like that, um, is 11 percent. Mm -hmm. And then your, your uh, felony sex uh, convictions, recidivism. Uh, rate is three percent. Whoa. Yeah. And I don't know if that's a result of the monitoring and, and the uh, tracking and maintaining. Uh, just keep it on you know tabs where these guys are at and what they're doing um, because they know that they're being watched, or if it's because of the type of crimes it is. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the, Typical sex offender conviction. Mm -hmm. First offense. I've never been convicted of any other crime. Oh, okay. All right. So, so, um, so they're caught, they're convicted, and now they're being watched. Um, they're having to check in, provide information yeah. about their home or work. So, um, so I don't know if that is a result of that or. Or is this a result of just us tracking it? Mm -hmm. Well, I would imagine if you're a supporter of this law, which most people would be, that would be a pretty significant a positive piece of information. So I'm, I want to ask you about victims. Um, do you know uh, percentages uh, of child victims or adult victims? 
based on um, the offenders that I see mm -hmm. and what I've looked into in their history, large percentage of them have child victims. Mm. So whether it's child molestation, child rape, you know, or something yeah. like that. So it's important for people to pay attention, of course, when these level three notifications come out. And you can't miss them. I mean, they're basically they're shared on radio, television, the newspaper. I mean, they kind of really make the rounds. But uh, there is another source here in our community, too, and that's going to a website, right? Where right. can we, where do we go? You can go to, uh, go to Kennewick, um, and it'll lead to, to a website. Or you can use the Bent County Sheriff's Office and go to their website and specifically other sex offenders uh, and go to that. There's also a national website called Offender Watch and uh, I use that uh, to get information. Uh, Offender Watch, with that database you can actually get alerts, apply for alerts that, that will tell you if, for your address if somebody's a level two or three that's moved to that. Into oh, the really? So you oh, can, boy, I think that'd be worth it. So you can go to Offender Watch and um, ask for that. To um, be alerted, okay. Hmm. Also, in that database, you can plug in your address. You put a radius in of your address, half a mile, for example, and it will show you all the level twos and threes that are in your radius. Mm -hmm. of your address. Uh, how do you, how would you uh, judge this law? Do you think it's very effective? And I'm really, you know, I'm sorry, putting on the spot here. Of course, you're not going to say, of course, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, like I said, when you look at the, the recidivism rate, um, the accountability, it's, it's, uh, it's really, I think, had an effect on the amount of, People that aren't victimized. Yes. Uh huh. So there, are, there are people like you in Benton County, Franklin County, and in the cities as well. Uh, Richland has a detective assigned mm -hmm. uh, to do the same thing. Uh, Benton County has a detective assigned for the county areas. I think they take care of Benton City. And then, uh, I know that uh, Franklin County has the same thing. Um, and then Pasco mm -hmm. has somebody signed. And, uh, you know, going back to the panel that does the uh, ratings and stuff, we meet monthly and we have those representatives from those agencies in the meeting, uh, both uh, prosecutor's offices for Franklin and Minton County also have somebody present at those meetings. Um, so we review people coming in that are unrated that are going to be rated. Mm -hmm. um, for example, I have one that just moved in out of California and I will get all the history and put together uh, a package showing what his le scoring level should be and then I'll present that at our, our next meeting and the panel will vote on that. Do these restrictions follow somebody till the end of their life? Uh, no. Um, a Class A felony is for life. That's for so, life. Uh, and that would be, for example, like rape of a child in the first degree. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So we're going to track their address and what they're doing for the rest of their life. Right. Okay. And then uh, Class B felonies would be a 15-year requirement. What's a Class B felony in the sex offender world? Uh, child molestation third. Mm -hmm. Okay. So right. they would have, have um, So 15 years. We're going to follow them. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then Class C felony, a 10-year requirement, uh, commu communication with a minor, um, with a prior conviction, mm -hmm. uh, would be a Class C felony. All right. Um, they, they do have the right to appeal to the court. They can petition the court for relief of duty to register. Um, when I'm asked that question, when I'm doing my verifications, I refer them to the sheriff's office since they handle the registrations. They can actually um, let them know what the qualifications are that they have to meet and what the process is to, get to petition the court for relief of duty. Mm -hmm. So there's, uh, you know, 
to establish a procedure for that. Yeah. Well, I don't <laughs> I don't care about that. So. <laughs> is what I'm thinking in my mind. <laughs> if they commit the crime, they can uh, they can tell us where they're living for a long period of time. That's okay with me. So, you know, uh, it sounds like it's, you know, I mean, it's a pretty good law, but it also takes citizens to be alert. I mean, you need to know and pay attention. Yes. You can't, yeah. uh, we can't expect you to be doing it all by yourself. And, and that's one of the things about offender watch is you can go in there and you can yeah. enter tips. Um, mm -hmm. And I get phone calls from time to time where they think somebody's moved in or somebody's moved out. No one's registered, no one's registered. And then, of course, we investigate it. Yeah. Yeah, I would, that, that sounds like a, you know, a worthy activity to be involved in. So, Officer Wes Gardner, I want to thank you so much for showing up today and telling us about how sex offenders are monitored in our community and our state. Really appreciate that. You're quite welcome. Keep doing a good job, Wes. We appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. We're back in a moment. Stick around.